Praise be unto God, everybody. I just wanted to encourage you all really quickly. Um, I'm just going to simply just come straight at it and just say, don't complain, saints. Don't complain. Don't complain. Stop complaining. Stop complaining. Don't complain. Don't cancel your breakthrough with your mouth. There are things that we've been praying for and asking God for, but we don't even realize that we're pushing our blessing further and further away. For life and death is in the power of the tongue. God said that he's the bread of life. Jesus is the bread of life. He is life. So life and death is in the power of the tongue. You can either speak the language of the kingdom or you're going to speak the language of the kingdom of darkness. It's, I, it's either two. No man can serve two masters. Let's just say my breakthrough was this Wednesday, but I just keep complaining and I push it four Wednesdays up and I push it four more Wednesdays up and I push it four more Wednesdays up. In essence, the devil is not only after me not being blessed because I'm already blessed. He's not only after me for that purpose, but he wants your prayers to be unanswered. He doesn't want you to get to what God has for you at all. Because in receiving what God has for you, builds trust, builds relationship. And I'm not saying that's the only foundation of it. Your relationship should be solely because you believe God and you believe who he say he is. So I'm not saying that the blessings is what determines how close you are to God. But when someone gives you a gift, I don't care what nobody say, you feel differently about that person. When it's your birthday and you get a birthday present from them, it, it makes you feel closer to them. Be in that receiving in sometimes you feel closer to the person you feel like you can trust them more especially if the gift is from the heart you know you'll know especially if you have a spirit of discernment you'll know if someone is doing what they're doing from the heart they can't fool god that's within you so when you receive from god when you're being intimate with God, being distracted takes you out of intimacy with God. Being distracted takes you out of prayer from God. Being distracted keeps you from reading your word. All those things is what the devil is after. He does not want you to connect with the Father. He does not want you to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because it leaves no space for him. It leaves no space for his minions to operate. If you notice the entire Bible, the entire Bible, the enemy sent distractions to keep us from believing God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, distraction. What was in front of them? Their circumstance. David, Bathsheba, distraction. Mm. <laughs> I can go on and go on and go on. Samson. I can go on and go on. But the point is, the enemy loves to distract us. So today when I was at work, I had an experience with God yesterday that was immaculate, man. I mean, his, his manifest presence is so sweet, so beautiful, so tender. I mean, it's almost as if you're touching and kissing his face. That's how I felt. Not saying that that literally happened, but it just... He was so close to me at that moment. I just felt like I could just touch and kiss his face. And I don't boast about my experiences with God because you too can have your own experience with God. I'm no more special. I'm no more great than you. We can all, but it just has to be an opening in your heart. A true yearning. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be added unto you. And the problem is, is a lot of us are seeking the things that are to be added rather than seeking the one first that makes or that cause those things to be added. Why are we seeking the thing and not seeking the giver of that thing and not seeking just to get the things, but seeking because you love him and because you want him, because you need him. But he's a father of gifts. God gives gifts. It's not all just pain and suffering. God gives gifts to his children. God loves us, man, more than we can ever even imagine. Don't be miss. Don't misconstrue what you see. 
Pain is an opportunity for growth. Pain is an opportunity to be stretched. Pain can be an opportunity for exposure, for things to be seen that need to be seen. Pressure, tension, all those things are needed. But God also gives gifts to his children. He loves on his kids, man. He, he really loves us more than we can ever even imagine or even conceive of. The Bible tells us that. We haven't even reached the capacity of understanding of how much God loves us. But the enemy's job is to keep you distracted. That's the whole point that I'm making right now. He want to keep you distracted so that you'll come out of the presence of God. God doesn't leave us. We leave the presence. <laughs> Listen. I like to compare his presence to like an umbrella. It's just, it, it covers you, man. We the ones that leave the cover. We leave the umbrella to get rained on and look at God and ask God why we wet. He's still standing there with the umbrella like, dude, you left. It's, 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 it's time to really focus on Jesus, man. Listen to what I'm telling you, man. Jesus is coming soon for a church without spot or wrinkle. No blemish. What will we be doing when he comes back? There will be people that will be cursing somebody out when he comes back. I pray I'm not one of them. There will be people that are in sexual sin, masturbating, fornicating, and watching pornography when he returns. There will be people that are on airplanes and the pilot is a Christian. I pray I'm not one of the ones that's not connected at the time. There will be bus drivers that are Christians. And there will be a bus full of believers that are not. I mean, there'll be a bus full of people that are not believers while that bus driver is a believer. There will be people driving on the highway at 65 and 70 miles per hour. They're Christians on a road full of sinners that are not saved. There will be fires from people that are cooking and Jesus will return while people are cooking. You know how many house fires are gonna start? Mm -mm -mm. What, what, what will we be doing? If Jesus came back just today, last night, the night before. What would he come upon? What would he have walked upon? For he comes like a thief in the night. It's time to get right. It's time to get serious with God. We complain about our situations. We complain about our supervisors. We complain. Yeah, and, 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 and it's hard. Trust me, I know. But sometimes, that's why God, I really believe he said in his word, to work as if you're working for God. Work as if you're working for him. Because when you can work under somebody that you don't like, when you can serve under somebody that you don't really care for too much, or someone that's hurting you, someone that's abusing their authority over you, and you can still keep loving them and coming in their presence, it really shows who you're looking at. It really shows who you're doing, what you're doing for. It exposes, I mean, the very being of why you do what you do. If you can work for a nasty supervisor and you can still see God within the circumstance of, I can go to work like I'm working for God even though this person is blatantly doing me wrong, then it's really all about Jesus. It's not about us. It's not about us. It's about the kingdom. It's not about your status. It's not about how much you know. It is not about the people bowing to you, but bowing to God. You being an instrument for Christ in this very cruel and dying world. And a lot of us are not there. We're lying. We're not there. It's still about us. It's, we're, we want the attention. It's about us. We want the praise. We want the honor. And we want the glory. And we lie. 
and we hide behind religion. It's a lie. We got to get serious with God. I told you before. I told you before. Listen, listen, listen. Go back to, I think, a couple of videos. I told you I was sensing. I wasn't sure if it was God. I said I was sensing in my spirit, like a feeling. There was no words. A feeling like people's wickedness that they have been hiding was going to come to the light. And I said, Lord, fix me because I don't want to be exposed. Fix me, Jesus. I don't want to be exposed. Fix me, Jesus. And lately, I've been seeing videos on YouTube and all around, mainly on YouTube, but whatever videos people pull up. And I'm not really sure exactly what the exact via is, but I've been seeing videos of people cursing each other out in the church. Uh, people fist fighting in the church. That's a spirit. People actually going back and forth in the church. I'm seeing it in before my eyes. Cursing. Fighting physically. That's a form of exposure. Because nine times out of ten, that person that popped on the other person didn't like that person for an increment of time. And most likely, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, most likely they didn't like the person. And just because they were hiding behind religion and not really allowing God to be their avenger, not really allowing God to take care of their battles, they wind up going back and forth with someone and lost themselves. You can't play with this thing. Demons are real. And any little crack they can get in, they coming. That could be me fighting in a place that's considered holy. So I'm not looking at nobody looking down on anybody. What I'm telling you is it's time to get right. I highly doubt that the year of 2022, that God is going to allow the garbage that's been going on for a while for certain people. Because to whom much is given, much is required. And we know better. There's, there's been some of us that's, that's just been riding on grace a little bit too long. His mercy endures forever. But some of us, the Bible says, those that knoweth my will and doeth it not will be whipped with many stripes. That's Bible. You can't go against that. It's time to cut the nonsense and get serious with God, including me. I'm not talking down to nobody as a messenger of the most high God. I'm just a messenger. If you don't like it, take it up with God. He called me. I didn't call me. To be honest, I didn't really want this anyway. I would have preferred to be in Europe somewhere doing music. My dream was not to be here preaching. That wasn't my dream. Just so we understand that. You have a problem with, you don't have a problem with me. You have a problem with God. He called me. He called me. He called me. So you don't have a problem with me. You have a problem with God within me. I ain't perfect. But I do my best to follow the spirit of God. Especially when it comes to ministry. It's time for the people of God to stop playing with him. A lot of us are playing with God. A lot of us have double lives. And it's time to stop. No questions asked. I'm telling you, you're going to see something if you don't. And that's not a threat. I'm telling you, the God is a righteous God. He's loving. He's kind. He's merciful. And he's loving. But it comes a time where He's ready to judge. And it's all over the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. God's judgment is still alive and well. He is a just God. If he called you, serve him. Listen. Keep me in prayer. Keep me in prayer that God will keep me humble. Keep me in prayer that I will follow the course. Keep me in prayer that I will preach and teach the word of God. Not, not letting it not be about me, but being solely only about him. You can think I'm fake. I don't care no more. Think I'm fake. Think I'm whatever. This is the way I praise God. This is the way I love God. 
You ain't me. You ain't been through what I've been through. You haven't experienced God the way I have. So not saying that it's better, this just the way I have. So that's why I have a certain response to God the way that I do. Talk about me, do whatever you want, but always keep in mind the Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my servant no harm. Keep that in mind what the Bible says. But I really believe in my heart. We spoke about being thankful in the midst of trouble. We spoke, we, we, we spoke about minimizing distractions and the reason why the enemy is trying to distract you. He just wants you out of the presence of God. In the presence of God is where everything happens. <laughs> it's where everything happens. In his presence. Go back to that sermon. In his presence. And thoroughly, we talked about stopping, stopping the nonsense and getting serious with God. And we also spoke about us. We spoke about the rapture. That's a real thing, guys. Blink of an eye. That's quick, man. You don't have time to get it right after that. Boom. That's it. That's why we have to live every day like it's our last. We have to do it the right way. And it's the biblical kingdom way. Jesus is real. He is coming. He is coming. May not be in our lifetime. But you still don't know when you're going to take your last breath. A lot of people woke up this morning and went to work and didn't come back. People dying in fires, car accidents, freak accidents, falls and spills. Oh my God, you don't know when your rapture is going to be. And what I mean by that is, it's just a figure of speech of saying you don't know when you're going to die. So just because you may, you may not uh, 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 experience Jesus coming back in your lifetime, which you still will, because if you're dead in Christ, you're going to rise first. But the point that I'm making is this. Either way, you can leave here two ways. Jesus coming back or you dying. We don't know that last day. We don't know that last day when Jesus is coming. We don't know that last day when we're going to pass away. So we got to live this thing, man. We got to do it. We got to do it the right. We got to do it Jesus way. Jesus way. Jesus way. Jesus way. Not our way. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross. Daily. And I believe that's why he said daily. Because he knew you would drop it. He knew you would drop it sometimes. He said, pick up your cross daily. Follow me. Follow me. That's, I, that's what God is saying. I hear God saying it to somebody right now. Follow me. You have nothing to lose. Look at me. Look at me. I don't care what's going on over there. I don't care what's going on over there. I care about you. I care about you. I care about what's going on with you. The circumstances. It's going to pass. Those circumstances are usually just stages for you to see God's manifestation. To see his hand. I believe in God for so much and some of it I haven't even seen an inch of it come true but I believe in my heart and I know he'll never leave me nor forsake me that I've seen he's never left me thus, thus far no matter what happens to me he didn't leave me it was meant for whatever purpose which I pray that that doesn't happen but I love the Lord he has me in his arms he loves you he has you in his arms God love you. God bless you. I'm praying for all of you. I really am. You can be, you can believe me. You don't have to. I'm praying for you guys. I'm praying for everyone that's listening. I pray that the anointing would convict somebody, would encourage somebody, would lift somebody up, give you your strength back. But it's time to stop playing church. It's time to stop playing church. I'm talking about worldwide. A lot of people play in church. And it's about us. It's not really about God. And God's not standing for it anymore. I'm telling you. Stop playing with God. Don't play with God. Don't misuse his word. This is serious. Try it. You don't believe me. And I don't advise you to try it. That's sarcasm. Trust me. I don't want you to try it. I want you to stop. I want us to get real with God. Worldwide. In Jesus' name. Amen.